Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and honoured guests. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Robin Wright, I'm the Managing Never. Director. Never! I don't remember me, that's it. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to, in, to, to welcome you all here today to Wydean's Open Day, and thank you all for coming along to help us celebrate our 50th year of manufacturing here in Howarth, and also our Golden Jubilee, uh, of Wydean being the ownership of, of my family, the Wright family. So now we've come to the formalities part of the day. The, the order of proceedings, by the way, is listed in the front of your leaflets and also on the board here on my right. <coughs> this is not a customer-facing event. We decided the most fitting way of celebrating this occasion would to be invited to all those who have played a part in getting Wydean to this significant <coughs> milestone. Namely, present and past employees and home workers, and local suppliers and service providers. Thus, in the main, that is yourselves. So, by way of thanks, this event is to recognise all the hard work that you've put in over the years. To make sure that this company achieved its goals and ensured its continued survival. Uh, which operating the textile sector has not always been so easy. So I say to you all, thank you. Thank you for your hard work and dedication to the company over the past 50 years. Now, to witness this occasion, and also to get to see a little of what goes on here at YD, we've extended the open day invitation to our neighbours, community leaders and some local personalities. As you can see, uh, from the array of items on show here today, Wydean does not make a very commercial product and as I understand it, a lot of what goes on in here is pretty much unknown locally uh, and that is unless you've worked here. Um, <laughs> so this open day is providing us with an opportunity to set that right. I hope that later on you'll all have the opportunity to uh, be guided around the mill and as, as, see how some of the products are created or just, just take a look at where you used to work and perhaps even show the present day weavers how it should be done. <laughs> I'd also like to add my special thanks to our honoured guest for coming today to help us with proceedings. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our Deputy Lord Lieutenant, David Pearson. Thanks, Robert. David. Robin, uh, thank you for doing Elaine and I the, the very considerable honour of being invited here today to be your guests uh, and representing the Crown at what looks like being an absolutely splendid event. Um, this time last year I had absolutely no thought that within 12 months such a change could have come over my life and, and Elaine's life after receiving a totally unexpected commission as one of Her Majesty's Deputy Lieutenants for West Yorkshire. When that happens, you enter a world that's been previously unknown to you. Sometimes it's deadly serious of precedence and how to salute, how to lay wreaths, what to do when you attend a funeral or a citizenship ceremony, and ever such a lot more. But you've also got to see the amusing side of things, and some of you have seen that this morning as I tripped over my sword quite spectacularly. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm forming a meaningful relationship with this contraption. At the moment today it's DL1 Sword 2, but yesterday I won. Um, they teach you how to get out of a Land Rover in a dignified fashion, how not to giggle when something uh, solemn, that should be solemn, happens like the band playing the wrong tune or something <coughs> like that. Um, Gilbert and Sullivan would absolutely have loved it. But what I'd not expected was the contact with um, a couple of gentlemen, the Court Taylor, who's a splendid chap, and somebody who you'll never forget, the Cutler Royal, who makes swords. And the rookie deputy lieutenant is sent to see these two characters um, to get kitted out. The, uh, remarkably, the tailor has his factory in Leeds. Somewhat prosaically, um, he directs you and he says, on the left-hand side off Domestic Street in the Holbeck Industrial Estate. It's quite remarkable. And in there, it's just a, another world. It's like this place. You just don't believe it exists until you get there. Um, so the uniform's made of uh, Yorkshire cloth by Yorkshire people in Yorkshire. Similarly, my sword was made in Yorkshire of Sheffield steel. And in an age when it's fashionable, to denigrate UK manufacturing, both in terms of quality and its contribution to the economy. It's a delight to learn that such things using steel, cloth and skills, all from Yorkshire, are not unusual, but in fact that it's simply the norm. In fact, everything that I'm wearing, or at least all of it that you can see, and quite a lot of it that you can't, is made in Yorkshire by Yorkshire people. 
and remarkably to them, uh, none of it's any, anything special. It's what they all do all day, every day. And I hope that you can see from the way that I'm kitted out that they achieve um, daily what most of us strive for over a lifetime. And I think that's excellence. It was inevitable when getting measured for all this kit that the tailor and later the swordsmith would ask Elaine and I where, where we live. And we told them about Haworth. Um, some people recognise Haworth when we talk about it and remind them it's where the Brontes wrote their world-beating novels and today we're lucky to live in a place that's one of the world's greatest literary shrines. Others recognise it from the railway connection, which is, and make absolutely no bones about it, although Matthew will tell you I do have a modest vested interest in saying this, the Worth Valley Railway is a world beater. It's known throughout the world for the, its excellence. Sometimes in desperation, uh, I tell people that we live next to a boozer called the Old Hall, and they, they recognise that. Um, perhaps they're rather more bibliously than literally inclined. But in the arcane worlds of, of uniforms and sword making and allied disciplines, there's only one thing that makes Haworth special. And yet that's also a byword for international excellence, and that's why Dean Weaving, what it does, and the genius of the people who do it. Why Dean is known throughout the world for being on every parade and in so many films. Watch A Royal Wedding, watch Russell Crowe's Epaulettes, watch The Curse of the Mummy, watch Prince Harry's Tazzles. You'll be there um, watching work that Wydean has done. The work of Wydean's people, their creative ingenuity and their utterly superb products. Your work at Wydean provides the personal architecture not only to the idea of the might and majesty of the British monarchy but also its forces which protect the civilised society for which it stands. The purposes of the monarchy and its, civilized, its civilian and armed forces are a noble thing that deserve the splendid recognition and symbols that Wydean provides. We can only hope that the warrant that Robin so much covet, covets might soon be yours. Whilst you might be dazzled at the magnificence of my Wydean made solid silver short shoulder boards, swoon at the grandeur of my Wydean sash and tassels, and be made breathless at the effortless way that I am the master of a sword slung on Wydean slings, what you don't see is what goes on underneath. It enables that air of debonair insouciance to waft around the apparently accomplished wearer of, of what it is, what is, for those uniform geeks amongst you, the number one ceremonial uniform of a deputy lieutenant of England. As Elaine, my long-suffering wife, and I have to get a, an advert in here, the soon-to-be First Lady President of Keithley Golf Club, she's recruiting and she'll be only too pleased to talk to you afterwards. Um, as Elaine will tell you, intimate around my nether regions and extensive under the tunic is a cat's cradle of leather strapping, silk hangers, velcro and webbing, all interdependent, creaking and groaning and stretching to the maintain the dignity of the Crown's representative, whilst all the while ensuring that one's sword does not droop. <laughs> and where does that lot come from? Well, you've guessed it. It doesn't come from the much vaunted overseas factories of China and Korea and the Far East, but from the mill at the side of the Worth Valley Railway in Haworth. Widing weaving whose products enhance and ensure that the dignity of the great and good is maintained as a result of its creative design, wonderful <coughs> products, but most importantly, its terrific people. It's terribly unfashionable to say, but I'm delighted, and you may to learn, and you may also be delighted to learn, that Britain is actually the sixth largest manufacturing nation in the world. Manufacturing provides 12% of the UK's gross domestic product. It employs 8% of its workforce and is worth about £117 billion a year to the economy. To put that into some sort of perspective, Britain's financial services industry, um, which by any measure is the leading one in the world, is worth only about £86 billion, about 6% of GDP, and employs about 4% of the workforce. In short, manufacturing is about twice as large as financial services, and it's growing both in size and importance to the economy, as work initially trickled but now starts to flow steadily, if not yet a flood, back from China and the Far East. Manufacturing wins hands down over financial services, and Wydean makes things. Again, it's a little known fact that Britain is the world's second largest investor in overseas enterprises after the USA. Wydean invests overseas. Exports are critical to the well-being of the UK, Wydean exports. It exports products that are instantly recognisable as being the best of British. I should know, I'm not only dripping in them, they're holding up my trousers. <laughs> Wydean is up there with Rolls-Royce, British Aerospace and Jaguar Land Rover. All leaders in what they do, and although much the smallest, Wydean is just about the same thing. Excellence in British manufacturing, 
comparable with any on the planet. Leaving Whiting for a moment, tourism contrib contributes 8% <coughs> of our GDP, about £114 billion a year, and about 2 million people are employed, which is about 7% of the total workforce. Again, it's bigger than banking and financial services. Howarth's main businesses are manufacturing here at Wydean, and just across the road at Airedale Springs, and all around us, tourism. In short, Wydean not only makes world-beating products, it's an integral part of a world-beating <coughs> business combination in this fantastic little village that we're so lucky to live in. That little village has adapted over the years to make the very best of what it has available to produce excellence today in two of Britain's most important industries. Howarth was once a mill town. Today it's adapted its people and its places to provide tourists with an experience that is up there with the very best in the world, with the Brontes and the railway. But the parsonage and the railway have had to change to do that. The parsonage is now a museum, but it's still there. The railway is still a railway, but people use it for very different reasons than they did in the past. Both have changed and adapted, not only to survive, but spectacularly to prosper, to the extent that their fame is worldwide. It's the same with Wydean. Over the years, its name has changed, what it does has changed, and thankfully, where it does it has changed. Coventry and Colford's loss is very much Howarth's gain. It's been said that the main sign of success in a business is that it's still active, and that to achieve that, a business has to be prepared, if necessary, to change all that it is, and all that it does. A great trick in doing this is seeing the need to change in time, and Wydean seems blessed with the foresight which, like its products and people, is second to none. If ever there was a business that can change and see the need to change in time, which can adapt, yet still be in the forefront of what it does, and contribute so much to this great nation, not only in terms of economics, but in the excellent products that it makes, it seems to be wide in weaving. By any measure, its success is as spectacular as its neighbours at the Parsonage and the Railway. So, happy birthday, Wydean, and thank you. Thank you for changing. Thank you for giving our village so much of its life and purpose. Thank you for what you stand for and for what you have given to Britain, to Yorkshire and to Haworth. And thank you for all that you have achieved for so many people. Thank you. Um, it's been tradition at YD for in workers who achieved 25 years service working for the company, continuous service, that we recognise that, we recognise it with a gift. Uh, but nowhere have we actually brought all those uh, recognitions together. So we thought, what better time to do that for when we achieved our 50th. So David, if I could call upon you to unveil our plaque. When you go to the Lord Lieutenanting School, they teach you how to do this. Um, also what to do when it falls down, so it is going to work, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've been told to use a microphone because we have quite a few people listening from the back there. Okay, um, having said that, a lot of you did a lot more of 25 years service. Um, whether it be come as a work in the school holidays and then work in work for a while, or then uh, leave to have children and become an outworker, and then in a lot of, lot of cases come back in again. And so we felt it was unfair, particularly with some of our staff that uh, all, of these, all of these people should be mentioned. So we again today we're going to try and put that right and um, David I believe you might like to. Yeah. Wydean's policy has always been to recognise staff and it's recognised <coughs> staff who have achieved 25 years continuous service in work and whose names are on the banner. Some employees have achieved a little bit more than that though to Wydean. Um, in various capacities as both in and out workers. So to that end, we're going to present the Over 30 Club, that's people who've worked here for over 30 years, with a small token of appreciation to your service at Wydean. So, Christine Whitehead, with 31 years service, could you step forward, please? Just like the Oscars, isn't it? <laughs> now, what you're all probably doing now, those of you with more than 30 years, is working out, oh God, is it going to be me next? So, Gwynny Williamson, Yay! you're next with 32 years. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> Next, with 35 years, is Christine Cawthorn. <laughs> We're not halfway yet. <laughs> Moira Rawnsley has given 36 years service. <laughs> We're starting to get towards my age now. With 39 years, Fiona Green. Thank you. Also, level pegging on 39 years is Joyce Inman. But there's one person without who Y Dean wouldn't be here, Robin wouldn't be here, and we certainly wouldn't be here. With 50 years service to her company, could we ask Norma Wright please to come forward? So, mother, it's um, can I call upon you to cut the cake? Okay. Um, Robert, I wonder if I could ask you to uh, come forward now. Robert is, uh, I've known Robert for probably over a decade now, and Robert has helped us along the way, and um, I asked him to ask him to say a few words today on his recollection, so. It's a bit of a tall up. Where are we going with this? Can you hear me at the back? That's you know. okay. Closer to the okay, right. right. <laughs> well, um, Deputy Lieutenant. It's me. Madam Chairman, Robin, Deb, and a fantastic galaxy of guests, of friends, employees, members of staff, all the people that make Wydean the amazing place that it is. I really feel humbled that you've asked me to say something today, Robin, because I've only been involved with the business for about 10 years. But I have seen it go through an amazing transformation. The Deputy Lieutenant's covered most of that for me, thank you, so I haven't got much to say now. <laughs> um, so I thought, you know, my wife's an actress, she gives me some good tips, and she said, when you've got an audience, and you're between an audience and lunch, you keep it short, uh, because there's a very thin dividing line between an audience and a mob. <laughs> and I don't want to say, but, you know, we're celebrating Yorkshire today, aren't we? And I think yeah. that the world is divided into three categories of people. There are those who were born in Yorkshire, there were those who wished they were born in Yorkshire, <laughs> and others with no ambition at all. <laughs> now, ambition, ambition is central to the things that Robin has achieved here. 
And I thought that I'd try and find a way of just engaging. I'm sure we've all been to the Alhambra, to the pantomime, haven't we? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. oh, no, we haven't. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. So I'm going to get some audience participation going. I've got three songs that I think you might recognise. And I'll give you a bit of a clue, and then I'll explain why it's relevant. You don't have to sing it, and, and, and I'm not singing it either. So the first one is a Queen record. And you've got to imagine Freddie Mercury in a dress with a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> what is it? Break free. Break free, yes, yes. Now, that's relevant to me because I met Robin on a business <laughs> consultancy. <laughs> <laughs> Keep digging, keep digging. Really dress over again. <laughs> I didn't know they made frocks as well as that. <laughs> uh, in Madrid, on a business development program called Break Free, which was a fantastic arrangement, a, a pressure cooker of companies looking at their businesses. It was supported by NatWest. I think we've got one or two of the culprits here today who took a group of people out to consult, to look at the businesses and to take an objective view of what they were going to do in the future. I was very fortunate to be classified as one of the international faculty. Uh, you know, it sort of went Australia, South America, Canada, Germany, Bradford. <laughs> and I was the Bradford contingent. But that program, that break free program was stunning. And on the very first day, I was aware that we were all doing little consultations around the ballroom, uh, little groups. And Robin and Deb and Andrew were at the next booth to me. And it didn't seem to me as if it was going very well, but I, I couldn't quite catch what was going on. And, and the things moved on. And then in the afternoon, it was my turn to sit down with Wydeen for the first time ever. I'm not exaggerating, Robin, am I? When you came to sit in front of me, you were ashen-faced. That's right. The three of you, they'd spent the rest of the morning wandering around Madrid, trying to get a flight home. Because the consultant that they'd sat down with at the first session said to them, well, I've listened to what you do, and it's sort of interesting, but you're in Yorkshire, and it's a difficult amount. He said, I know what. He said, I think you're a bit like candlestick makers. <laughs> It's true, isn't it? The end is now, yes. What you're doing is very nice and decorative, but there's no bloody future in it. <laughs> and they were really shocked. And I'm delighted to say that from that time on, Robin and I have worked together, but he's the man with the vision that has made the company what it is. He's moved it from that challenging time, manufacturing, competing with the world, to what is properly now described as a global supply chain management business. But the beauty of it is that he's retained the manufacturing, the looms are still working, so it's supply chain plus. <coughs> and the reason that I've just come in in a bit of a, a rush is because this morning I was with um, Roger Marsh, who is the chief executive of Leeds City Region, and he asked me to pass on his best regards to you because the government, Leeds City Region, financing, funding, encouragement. Why Dean Weaving, as a manufacturer, is a perfect example of what the government needs, what this country needs, and it's what Robin's made it. So, congratulations from Leeds City Region. Now, on the way, I've seen Robin do some very ambitious things to the point where he embarked on a project that some of you will know called the Forces Locker. And in that vision, he took this company with a couple of million pounds turnover to be the leading light of an international consortium with a total turnover of 200 million pounds, where the big companies and the major players were led by him for a considerable time. Unfortunately, the Ministry of Defence for whom we were responding to a call to be innovative and creative, has fallen behind. Now, whether they ever get to a point to be able to accept the incredible proposition that Robin made, which was to have a one-stop shop for uniforms for the three services, I don't know. But that vision 
that leadership from such a small operation to influence internationally is a testament to the way that Robin operates, the way the company develops, and I would like to combine my comments with a little uh, presentation to Robin. We are, oh there's a se second song, okay. Um, mere alcohol doesn't thrill me at all. <laughs> but I get my kicks from. <laughs> and where does champagne come from? Yeah. A Pernet in France. <laughs> Bottles, all right. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bottle of Yorkshire champagne. Oh. I got it at the weekend from the vineyard in Leventhorpe yes. next to Leeds. So let's toast a Yorkshire company with a Yorkshire champagne. Oh. Robin. Yeah. Uh, those of you who are observant said that there were three songs. Yeah. Now the next one, the next one is associated with Tommy Steele. <laughs> Not singing in the right. No. <laughs> I heard it over here. Half a sixpence. Half a sixpence. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to sing it. In spite of that challenge, I'm not going to sing it. So. Um, this thing about Yorkshiremen, you know, they do say you can always tell a Yorkshireman, but you can't tell him much. Uh, Robin's always been very receptive to my ideas, so it wasn't true to say that when I met Mr. Wright for the first time, I went on to discover that his first name was Always. <laughs> because he's been very receptive to the ideas that we've worked on together. But I have been um, uh, approached by the members of staff to do a special presentation because this fantastic recognition of service and contribution to the company, at the moment, it's incomplete. And Robin, you are wrong this time, because you have said that everybody gets a recognition apart from you. Well, the members of staff have contributed together to buy a special commemorative set of cufflinks made of silver sixpences, made in 1964, the Jubilee, the birth of Wydean Weaving, and it's my great pleasure to finish in presenting the set of cufflinks to you on behalf of all the members of staff of Wydean. expecting that. So thank you all. We were very responsible. Thank you all very much indeed. I'm not wearing a shirt that takes good links, but I will tomorrow. Shame. Shame. <laughs> right, I think that's about the end of the speeches. So thank you all for giving those speeches. Um, we, it's not always we'll get a, a, a gathering like this, so we want to make the most of it and capture it. So I don't think it's raining. If I could, uh, the only place we're going to get everybody into one grouping is out in front of the, the mill here with the, the sign of others. Um, so if I could ask you all to go outside and line up between the two blue fall pipes on the table here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if YD staff, current staff, could actually stand in the car park bit at the front and I believe uh, Lord Lieutenant and my mother uh, uh, will, will stand in front of that and will create a circle. So. That's a general idea, so sorry to upseat you. Um, we will put food on after that, so uh, that's the bait, so we won't take very long. <laughs>